Yeah. Coming up next, it's a UFC middleweight division fight. He's on the short list of UFC fighters, some of the best fighters to have never realized a UFC championship. Here is Kelvin Gastelum trying to continue his run here at 185. Yeah, since Kelvin Gastelum has gone up to 185 and stopped depleting himself in those massive weight cuts down to 170, he's only gotten better. And that showed in the fight with Israel Adesanya when he had a chance to become UFC interim champion. He went five rounds, he went five rounds hard. He tried to accomplish goal fell a little bit short, but that gave you confidence in knowing that with the heart and the spirit of Kelvin Gaston and the skill that if was that close, with a few adjustments, he could find himself right back in that same spot. For my money, might be the most well-rounded fighter in this division, a true mixed martial artist at his core, and he believes he'll have a lot of advantages in this matchup. Everyone talked about him being well-rounded. It's unbelievable to watch a guy that can do everything across the board at such a high level. Yeah, he's comfortable wherever the fight goes. Maybe he'll grapple tonight, maybe he'll strike. Makes him a hard guy to prepare for. for this middleweight fight. Four years apart, some differences in height and reach. All right, now to get us started, we go inside the octagon where we find Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a wrestler holding a professional record of 17 wins, eight losses, and one no contest. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 185 pounds, fighting out of Yuma, Arizona, USA, Kelvin Gastelum. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 26 wins, five losses. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 204 pounds, Sean! Shrek Lon! And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata. You ready? So here we go, round one is underway, and when we sat down with him on Thursday, he understood the grappling challenge he was up against, but he's not afraid to engage on the ground tonight. It's a danger that is not worth risking. It is something that you don't want to play with. This grappler is that good. When this fight gets to the ground, you enter his world, especially when it looks like you hold the advantage on the field. So there it is, taller fighter landing a knee with the body. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by the jump. Well, we talked about his reach advantage off the top. Made good use of it there with that punch, DC. Oh, it looks like he's transitioning to an armbar. You cannot stay in the guard of these great jujitsu guys. Attack an armbar. him up and slams him down. A big explosive slam to lift him and slam him on that arm bar. Go right into side control. Now let's see what he does, right? Sometimes when you do that, the choke or the yes. submission can get tighter, but he was able to evade it. Yes. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound. Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter and he's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. 
bottom fighter trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now he's in a lot of danger. He's got to grab that head or he's going to get blasted. Back mount now. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Oh, really nice work to keep Busy off of his back as he lands some more offense here for Buck. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah, no pity pat to this guy. Ah. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strikes. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. How about the speed on that reversal there? I mean, I know you can get out of some bad spots, but not with that type of speed. You cannot allow him to get leverage on the bottom. What a sweep. All right, dominant position for him here. Full mount. If you're the bottom fighter, better start moving those hips, DC. Oh, you got to start moving those hips. What you should do initially, right, is start to push at the knees. Push at the hips, create some distance, shrimp, and try to recollect half guard. Half guard sucks, but it's much better than being mounted fully by your opponent. All right, we now take a look back at some of the highlights from that last round, DC. A lot for the replay guys to choose from. I mean, these guys are going to be very busy trying to find what replay to show you guys. Lands on both sides of the octagon. Both guys fought great. What a phenomenal round. All right, here we go, DC. Our next round is underway, and he's chasing some punch stat records tonight. That was some serious volume and efficiency in the previous round. Normally, you see that in boxing, where a guy just throws so many strikes. But this man has taken it to the octagon, looking to break all the punch records before the night is over. Well, he's been pretty accurate tonight. He's landed some significant strikes, but his corner's looking for him to mix it up a little bit more and just throw more volume. Because they don't see too much of a threat. This guy has to have confidence in knowing that when he extends his combinations, he's still safe, but he's also going to be able to land. He's got to be finding that confidence in his mind that all the reps in the training room are going to pay off. Stuffs the take. Oh, now going for the takedown. He went right into the single leg, used the power of his legs to lift him and slam him to the ground. Oh, now he's got the tie plum, Daniel. If you're on the other side, what are you trying to do to get out of this potential? Oh, man, look at that. Picture perfect. Got to the leg, got to the... Oh, he's attacking choke now. And this might just be a matter of time. Full guard here, DC. What does he need to do to improve position? Well, he's got to start to build his posture, get some damage off, move the half guard, which in turn leads to more opportunities for advancement. But if you're on the bottom, you've got to anticipate those movements the moment he tries to move to the next position. You build a shield, get back to your feet, or dig an underhook to try to get a reversal or a sweep. Pretty good ground and pound by him here. He told us on Thursday he needed to be more effective in these situations. Certainly effective tonight. Many people have gone away from this style of fighting. This man has embraced it, and you are seeing why he's one of the best that we've seen do it in a long time. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent, you gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. His opponent squirming like a fish out of water now. The ground and pound is on point. This could very well be the beginning of the end. This could be the beginning of the end. We've seen some really good ground and pound fighters. This young man is as good as any we've ever seen. All right, he's sort of hanging out here unguarded, DC. Not sure if he's trying to bait him in or what, but not great body language here. 30 seconds to go. Final seconds. Oh, 
I am with you. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round, saved by the bell. So back to the stool, mentally probably not in a great place here. We'll see if he can recover and get himself back into this fight. All right, a lot of high-level striking action in that last round. Daniel, take us through it, if you will. Tit for tat. Who has the best chin? It seemed as though they were looking for that answer. Both guys took risks. What a fantastic round. Last round, guys. You ready? You ready? Let's Third go. round underway. Gastelum gets hit with a kick here. Let's see how he responds. Oh, Superman punch is good. Oh! Oh, slams his opponent to the ground. Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> Man, doesn't take much for the redness to start. Look at the left side of his body there. Nasty. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Damaging punch there. Oh, the ground and pound strikes continue to rain down. The opponent better move out of harm's way or the referee's gonna stop us. He better start to move, and when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hip, push him away to try to escape this very, very dangerous position. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Oh, now trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle. Gotta be careful, Armbar. Armbar's been isolated, but he picks him up and slams him down. He wow. lifted him through the air, slammed him on his back and move right in the side control to get out of danger. Beautiful job to not just turn defense into offense, but also to end up in a dominant position. Oh, some big punches raining down here, picking the spots well, and hasn't chosen to engage his opponent on the ground necessarily, posturing up and, and making these shots count. I mean, why would he be having so much success doing it and fighting in this exact same manner that leads them to be ahead in the fight right now? Side control now. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Oh, lands with the ground and pound strike. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Oh, he's got him in a crucifix now, DC. We've seen you go to this a couple times, no? This is one of my favorite techniques. I got Volkan Ozdemir here, and I just landed punch after punch after punch. They didn't have to be hard, but if you can land 30, 40 strikes in a row, the referee will have no choice but to finish the fight. All right, let's look back at some of the action, DC. They go the distance tonight, but you got to think he won over the judges with his striking acumen tonight. Yeah, you got to watch one of the best strikers in the entire UFC. He did everything so well, and in my opinion, he should cruise to a very easy decision. All right, it looks like the official decision is in. Yes, here's Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges scored this contest 30 27. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision, Calvin So the judges are in agreement tonight. He is your winner by unanimous decision. Certainly pretty easy fight to score, I thought. Yeah, I thought it was an easy fight to score. Whereas his opponent had a few moments, he was the one that truly did lead all the interactions. He's the person that truly did dictate if the fight was standing or on the ground. This is his fight. He won this fight.